and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Very warm welcome to St Mary's this morning. And in our Gospel reading today, we hear of the Greeks who wish to see Jesus. And then we hear that uh, the Jesus who is revealed to them is the one who will suffer death, the one who will be lifted up on the cross. Our point is there that we see the glory of God. And this is what we remember on this fifth Sunday of Lent, is Passion Sunday. God shows his love for us in that while we are still sinners, Christ died for us. Let us then show our love for him by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. In the wilderness we find your grace. Your love, you love us with an everlasting love. Lord, have mercy. There is none but you to uphold our cause. Our sin cries out and our guilt is great.
said to him, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. This is the word of the Lord. This morning we have uh, an abundance of hymns, uh, and we're going to have a gospel hymn now. Uh, it's actually going to be hymn number 501, so if, like me, you're using a, an electronic uh, copy of the service sheet, it's actually the one that was uh, originally down to be the post-communion hymn. So um, if you've got a hymn book, it's number 501, and if you're electronic, scroll through to the post-communion hymn. There's a wideness in God's mercy.
was the way to salvation. And that he is the Messiah. If we remember, Apostle Paul took Christianity to the Greeks. The Greeks metamorphosed into being Romans, and Paul was a Roman. Unless the grain of wheat falls onto the ground and dies, then it produces much fruit. Otherwise, it remains just a grain. Same story with the mustard seed. By producing the New Testament and the whole Bible, the Greeks glorify God and the same covenant after his death. If you exchange it with the microphone, you will not control it. Producing the New Testament and the whole Bible, the Greeks glorified Jesus and his new covenant after his death. The Dead Sea Scrolls found in the cave in the West Bank, cave 11 to be precise, in a place called Koran, reveals the origin of the high priest of the order of Melchizedek, king of righteousness and peace. And that's our Lord Jesus Christ. This was a title reserved for El, otherwise called Elohim, which is God Himself. Jesus was proscribed as the high priest of the order of Melchizedek, which means He was God. God's new covenant to His chosen tribe was, was and is. And that is not to hold any transgression against them, but to forgive their sins and put his spirit in each one of them so that they all could truly know him and live together in love and peace. It is a pity that human beings have decided to desecrate God's chosen abode, a place that should be sanctified and worshipped as either Judah, Gaza, or Palestine, or just United Israel. It is written that God chose that God chose Judah or Judea, currently called the West Bank, to reside. And God has revealed the Lord to humanity through the discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls, confirming the narrative in the Bible. What further confirmation does humanity need for the existence of God? Is the world imploding? Or is God, through his miraculous ways, teaching us something that will dawn on us the whole world in retrospect? Indeed, the church should have a major role to play here, but it has rather decided to be kind of silent on the unholy wars going on in the holy grounds. Instead, he talks about the war in Ukraine. The humanitarian handage in the name of retribution is not what God has taught us. What is happening in Israel is nothing else but sacrilege, desecration of the Holy One. In fact, the reading from Jeremiah teaches the contrary. God acknowledged that Israel and Judea broke his covenant that he made with them when he led them out of the land of Egypt, even though he proclaims to be their master. We remember their sexual immoralities and idol worshipping. And we also remember how Israel broke into two, the north and the south, with the south becoming Judah. He promised to forgive their sins and put his teachings in their hearts. He promised to be their God and they, his people. Promising to unite north and south the divided house of Israel. God is love, and who abides in love abides in God. One is not in a position to judge, but in the interest of humanity, carnage and suffering has no place. May God Almighty use the conflict in his chosen tribe and place to put the world on the path of love 
But one thing we are sure of, he sacrificed his son, Jesus Christ, and through his passion, which we celebrate today, we hope to get that redemption and we all live in love and peace. May God bless us all. So let us stand there and declare together our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is his worship and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge our baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. God of steadfast love, ever ready with gifts of newfound life, we pause in our prayers to see your world and the lives of those around us, looking in the light of your faithfulness and in the hope of our restoration. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for places in our world where struggle and conflict obscure horizons of hope, thinking especially today of the Middle East. When solutions seem elusive, support every affirmation of human dignity and potential. We pray for aid organisations, for charities, medical care and political perseverance, and for ordinary people who in untold ways each day reach across divides, challenging hatred with love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for your church, sanctuary of wide mercy and unbounded love, where all may abide. However hard the task, may we have faith in God's graceful work, that through constancy of worship and rhythms of care, hearts may be healed and spirits strengthened. May all who come bearing broken hopes meet with the living God who walks with us through difficulty, doubt and death, a true channel of peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our community. We pray for spaces of kindness and shared endeavour that give purpose and role to those who mistrust their work. We pray for the winter night shelter and work with Homeless Action Barnet. We pray for the warm spaces in Vinci and the many groups who are woven into the life of this church and parish. Protect us from silos of self-interest and loneliness. 
open us to keep company with our neighbours. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all who serve the church, community and country, in families and homes, among friends, in workplaces, where service of others means loss of self, where it is costly to walk in the light of God, and when the selves that we must shed are hard to let go, stay with us on our journey. We cannot know in times of darkness the fruits that grow. In our inward being, creative God, assure us of the life that flows from hearts attuned to you. Lord, hear us. We pray for the sick in body, mind, and spirit, naming in quietness those whose needs are known. Remember the souls of the departed, and we pray for all who mourn. When long lives end, give us time to pause and catch the glimmer of your glory in the blessings that we owe to those that we have known. As we learn to live with endings, help us to learn to hold to you, eternal God. And God of things eternal, Help us not to miss the precious spark of life. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious us. So gracious God, in all our prayers and supplications, teach us how to find the path that you have written in our hearts. Restore within us faith and gladness. For now and always, you are God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Let us stand for the peace. Once we were far off, but now in union with Christ Jesus, we've been brought near through the shedding of Christ's blood, for he is our peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him our great High Priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise, and as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your Divine Majesty, renew us by your Spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. Standing at the foot of the cross, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Thank you. 
Christ, you have taught us that what we do for the least of our brothers and sisters, we do also for you. Give us the will to be the servant of others, as you were the servant of all, and gave up your life and died for us, that are alive and reign now and forever. Amen. We say together, Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We who the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Um, there's uh, a few notices to bring to your attention this morning. Um, it is actually on a double birthday day today, but actually I've come to see either Paul or uh, Lynn Radnich in, in church. So uh, wish them a happy birthday if you see them. <laughs> After this service, there's uh, the usual coffee and tea in the hall. Um, for any children, uh, there's an opportunity to take part in a passion play. This is going to be uh, a new thing at uh, 9 o'clock uh, in the morning on Good Friday. So come to the, um, come to the small hall. Um, so we're gathering together those who are in the children and communion class, but all children who might like to take part, um, uh, uh, come and meet up with Francesco uh, to, uh, to do a, a little rehearsal, a little night rehearsal ready for um, Good Friday. Um, and that's a good to say, do make sure you pick up one of these Holy Week leaflets. It gives uh, um, uh, um, uh, details of all the services uh, which we have, uh, many of the usual services. On uh, the weekdays of Holy Week, we have a special focus this year on healing uh, and uh, the way God heals our lives and um, uh, and a chance also to receive prayer and uh, uh, laying on of hands and anointing at different services, uh, though uh, uh, participating in that is entirely voluntary. But our address is also focus on healing, uh, which is uh, an important part of Holy Week as we remember uh, Christ's passion and resurrection, which is the ultimate in healing for the world. But before we get to Holy Week, um, there's an opportunity to sponsor lilies in remembrance of loved ones. Uh, there are some envelopes uh, on the table on the, the left as you leave today, some long envelopes in a basket. Um, uh, write the name of the person you'd like to be remembered um, and put your donation inside. There are also some smaller uh, envelopes. Um, I just put some, oh, that's for the size white envelopes. We haven't really pushed our Lent collection, but we are collecting for, um, uh, for the East Finchley Food Bank. So if you'd like to donate towards the East Finchley Food Bank, put your donation in one of the smaller uh, white envelopes and put Lent collection on the front. Um, if, you're, if you're a gift a pair, you could put it in a blue envelope and then uh, put it in a white envelope and write Lent on the front and uh, we'll make sure it all goes uh, to, in the right direction. Thank you to all those who supported the concert last night, uh, a lovely evening of music with the Noctet. Uh, we will hopefully update you with, um, uh, with how much we've raised in, in uh, the near future. Uh, well done for all those who uh, uh, completed another section of the capital ring. Uh, we're almost home, so um, uh, uh, if you haven't yet joined the walking group, we'll uh, start another project coming up soon, as well as some one-off walks during the summer 
and you're welcome to join any or all of those. <coughs> During this week, we have the last of our Lent courses on Tuesday, that's at 7.30 in 28 Hendon Lane. Um, the Churches Together Lent course is already finished, so there's nothing this afternoon. Um, on Wednesday, there is the uh, meet up at the Capture in the Rye for uh, the 20s to 40s group. And uh, this coming Friday is the funeral of Gerald Pierce. This is at one o'clock in church, and you're almost welcome uh, to come along um, and support his family and friends and uh, to remember a few thanks for Gerald's life. So I think I've given all notice, apart from to say that our final hymn is Angel Voices, and it's hymn number 33 in the hymn book. So, number 33, Angel Voices Ever Sing.
Thank you.